Uh, we're obviously starting with the Russiagate 3.0. And just to answer a question down here, uh, has, Laura, has Lauren Southern made any statement? Not that I know, uh, but I'm not, I'm not a thousand percent certain. So, uh, you know, the, the very summary, um, the very summary summary of the facts, I think everybody knows what happened now. This indictment came down. I could not find out when the indictment was uh, uh, ha not handed down, but submitted and approved. Like there, there was no date on it that I could see, right? Uh, other than the date it was unsealed. Oh, that's a good question. Usually there's a date at the end where the grand juror is signed. I'm going to go see if I can pull that up when 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 you give us your feedback. Did you, uh, see which district it was in? Oh, Southern District of New York, Robert. I mean, that, that, that's the first thing I go to now. Where is it? SDNY. Oh, amazing. Of all the places, of all, of all where these defendants are located, SDNY. All right. So everybody saw it. Two Russian nationals who, from what I understand, are not in America any, in any event, uh, were named as the two defendants, alleged uh, criminal defendants guilty of FARA violations and money laundering because they allegedly set up a persona through which they were funneling upwards of $10 million into a Tennessee company that at least according to the indictment, they imply that they knew that this money was coming from Russians sort of surreptitiously, but that's only as a matter of opinion, not as any matter of evidence in the indictment. It's, it happens to be Lauren Chen's company that she set up in Tennessee with her husband. And they were taking this financing, which I presume they thought was from rich right-wing Europeans who wanted to finance a startup right-wing conservative website or platform. And uh, the money was used to license and sign on big content creators, conservative content creators, Tim Pool, Dave Rubin, Benny Johnson, Lauren Southern, not Lauren, yeah, Lauren Southern and Matt Christensen, who's going to be on tomorrow. Okay. It turns out apparently that this is FARA violations and money laundering because I don't know. I mean, the, those are the allegations of the lawsuit. The only paragraph that suggests that Lauren Chen knew it does it by innuendo. There was no evidence in there, you know, private DMs or correspondence that said, you know, that admitted definitively, we know this money is coming from dark sources and we need to conceal it, period. So what was the terms of the agreement? Was it a $10 million loan? Was it just philanthropic donations? We don't know yet. There is no that I saw. And if anybody can point me to, uh, you know, evidence that shows Lauren Southern knew, Lauren uh, Chen knew, I'm all ears, but I didn't see that from the indictment. And then they, you know, they pass off these commentators as stooges who were promoting Russian disinformation, even though by the indictment itself, there was no editorial oversight, uh, no uniform messaging. And at least in the vast majority of it, it was material that Ruben, Poole, Benny were producing anyhow that they were licensing to Tenet to rebroadcast so they could build up this platform into something bigger, hopefully. All right, that's the fact pattern. Uh, I, you know, Lauren, I don't think has said anything publicly. Neither has her husband, uh, Liam, I think is his name. And I had on the employee of tenant media, uh, Taylor Hansen on Friday's amazing guy. And hopefully he can land on his feet. Uh, Robert, this is the question. How the hell is this a FARA violation in the first place? Yeah. I mean, all of it's a fraud. Everything about it's a fake case. So it's a case that's meant to never go to trial. It's a case that's meant to never have discovery. Uh, it's a it's a case meant to hide the truth for forever because of a pending criminal case. They can refuse to disclose under the Freedom of Information Act what they actually know from public inquiries, even of interested parties. So it, it's a smear campaign and a spy campaign. For those that don't remember, Russiagate 1.0 was to cover up a spy campaign. The uh, the CIA, the FBI, the DOJ, high ranking members of the Obama administration conspiring with the Five Eyes Network, that, that's the UK, Canada, Austra Australia, New Zealand, were conspiring with the uh, CIA to spy on the Trump campaign and, and to launder their illicit spying operations by having another country do it if they couldn't do it domestically. That, that was part of the Five Eyes operation. But they needed a pretext. In the United States, that pretext was the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act which was, was, was intended to limit this kind of illicit spying. It arose from the church committee in the late 1970s uh, as a way when they figured out that the CIA and the NSA and others were illegally spying on people all the time. They said, okay, no more of this. If you're going to be doing it as a foreign intelligence gathering, you've got to abide by certain limitations. You've got to go to a foreign intelligence surveillance court. Of course, it didn't take long for those 
legislative mechanisms and courts to become co-opted uh, by the very intelligence community they're supposed to supervise. As Robert Kennedy recently told Tucker Carlson, the reason why he could never get appointed to head of the CIA is because the intelligence committee uh, that in the Senate is run by the intelligence community. Well, it used to be a select committee on intelligence, the church committee, meant to govern and control and cabin and constrict the intelligence community has become a tool of the intelligence community. Just look at the kind of people that are on those boards. Uh, one thing, one always sign, if you want to track somebody's investments, once they're on the intelligence committee, by golly, they tend to start to make a lot of money up on Wall Street. However, that correspondence tends to work. Uh, oh, not as good as Nancy Pelosi. She, she still got everybody beat for her magical ability to get those stocks to just go up and up and up that are in her portfolio. Uh, but that's the nature of it. So the first so the first part of any kind of Russiagate scheme, the template is come up with a bogus pretext to illicitly spy on people. One giveaway that this indictment was really all about illicitly spying on people is their evidentiary sources. If they have Discord chat, how the hell they got in there, nobody knows, DMs. I, I, and I was wondering, like, people were saying, well, Lauren must have turned and she was one of their witnesses. You know, she turned witness to the two Russian agents. Uh, from what I understand, she was as shocked when they got raided and shut down and saw the indictment as anybody else. So that's unlikely. So how the hell did they get in there? Probably another FISA application oh, behind yeah. closed doors based on falsified evidence like they did in 2016. Completely. So the that, that's always the first goal. You allege foreigners are involved. That allows you to circumvent f normal federal district courts that would have to be involved in any kind of search warrant. Uh, it allows you to spy on everybody's communications and correspondence without them know, having any notice or knowledge of it. Uh, the And the entire indictment is filled with your classic FISA material. Uh, almost nothing that would come from a traditional material. So the so that's what the first real object. And remember what FISA allows. FISA allows a one you know a, a what they call one hop rule. Basically, anybody that you have a FISA warrant on, you can also look at who they're communicating to their separate communications. So what this was was they could look at and you look at it. They chose they chose people that were influencers in the conservative space. So they wanted to spy on Dave Rubin and anybody communicating with Dave Rubin. They wanted to spy on people communicating with, Dave, with with Tim Pool and anybody they were communicating with. Spy on Benny Johnson and anybody they're communicating with. Spy on Lauren Chen and anyone they're communicating with. And spy on Lauren Southern and anyone she's communicating with. That was the goal and objective. The uh, By the way, that's a giveaway as to who is really behind this. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, now, now I'm just immediately regretting all of the pictures I've been sending Tim Pool. <laughs> I'm <laughs> joking, people. <laughs> the, uh, but that was exactly because they, uh, I talked about it with Alex Jones on Friday. They had tried the same thing with Alex Jones. They kept trying to approach Alex Jones uh, with uh, foreign investors over the last six years in order to, so they could illicitly open up a FISA operation on Alex Jones and everybody connected to him. Jones, of course, sniffed it out every single time uh, and, in fact, frequently would report it to the feds. And he's like, of course, you guys are probably not going to investigate because you guys are probably behind this. But just FYI. So they, they finally quit after the third try of trying to entrap and ensnare Jones. And he didn't take the bait. Let me just I see people in the chat a little confused and it's understandable. Lauren Chen is the um, founder one and her husband is founder two in the indictment. She founded the Tennessee company Tenet Media. Lauren Southern is one of the conservative commenters, commentators. Don't know if she's specifically named as a alien, whatever they call them, a commentator, one in the indictment. So it's Lauren Chen is the founder yeah. of, of Tenet and Lauren and Southern. She was is one, one of the Tenet uh, people that their Tenet was promoting. Mm -hmm. So the but so the first goal, this was a spy operation. And it was to come up with a pretext to spy on all these people. The second goal was a political operation, a sort of October surprise that could boost the Democratic ticket. So that, you know, when the time was right, when they'd milked all the information they could milk out of it, they would drop an indictment uh, that would impugn the integrity of, of conservative media and that would boost the Democratic narrative because they, they still think modern day McCarthyism works. I mean, it's extraordinary. They believe this, but they, they, they've convinced themselves of this. So they think that it will work to discredit conservative media and, and to uh, boost the Democratic messaging. The third goal is to your first question, 
to extend and expand the scope of the Foreign Agents Registration Act and comparable laws to effectively criminalize dissident speech in the United States, mm -hmm. simply because it is connected to, even in the most tangential, indirect, and unintentional way, funding from someplace outside the United States. Now, of course, this makes literally no sense. The idea the Foreign Agents Registration Act was passed intended to limit Nazi lobbying of Congress, and which actually was a problem. The uh, but the but it was direct lobbying of the federal government, and that if you were going to directly lobby on behalf of a foreign, there was a foreign government directly pays you to go talk to that government and do work that's the equivalent of diplomatic work, but you weren't being disclosed as a diplomat. They wanted Congress wanted you to disclose. Oh, by the way, I'm working. I've been paid now by the French. I've been paid now by the Germans. I've been paid now by the Russians, whomever. But that's what it was for, very limited, discrete context. It had only been used prior to General Flynn six times in American history. Just to, just to clarify that, it's for lobbying the government, and people want to know if you're lobbying the government for foreign interests, that's where it makes and sense. And foreign governments, on behalf of foreign governments, not just any foreign interests, has to be on, you have to be working directly for a foreign government. The question will be whether or not, let's assume that, and let's assume they were lobbying the government, and let's assume that it's the two RT employees. The question would be, were they acting in their capacity as RT employees? Even if they were, RT being state media, would that count as government lobbying? But oh, yes. the bottom line, it's for lobbying the government, not for, I don't know, activism in the media? Like, like oh, this is the, the idea that it now applies to any form of speech, that they, they keep trying to expand far wider and wider and wider. And I've been a critic of it from day one. Like the sedition laws, those are horrendous laws. The, the variations that people get excited about our treason laws, a lot of the variations of our treaties, treason laws are unreliable laws that are they used to go after political dissidents and outsiders. Uh, and that's especially true with the FARA laws. Ever since uh, Flynn, they've been wanting to extend and expand this to allow them to criminalize speech they don't like by uh, by just calling it somehow lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. Because remember, even in, in Flynn's case, they didn't have direct payments from a foreign government, from the Turkish government. It was always, it, it was, they were going more steps removed, more steps removed, more steps removed, more steps removed. The irony of all of this is pretty much every think tank in Washington, D.C. is funded by the Mideast. The, for example, Ben Shapiro decided to be critical of Lauren Chen on these related issues, and they have different positions on Israel. And, and, and as I was watching the clip, I was like, what are the odds? Because Ben Shapiro is always you know, doing ads, like there's these, these great parodies and satires of Shapiro that he has to do like eight ads you know, every, every 15 seconds. But the, uh, I was like, but what's the odds? He does one. That's funded by Israel. I was like, oh, well, what are the odds? He's going to sit here and criticize Lauren Chen for allegedly receiving money unknowingly from a foreign government. And he's going to sit there and stop in the middle of it and do an ad on behalf of a foreign government. And yet, that's exactly what he does. He does it right there. It's like he, he's a living parody, Ben Shapiro. But the big money doesn't come from Israel, folks. It comes from ask yourself how Qatar could be hosting and safe harboring the leaders of Hamas, and get zero criticism in the United States or Western media. Well, maybe not in Paris because, and in France because they own the famous French soccer team, the PSG, Paris Saint-Germain. Maybe not in the United States because they own half the think tanks in Washington, D.C. You couldn't, if you threw a rock, you were going to hit somebody who's getting money from a foreign government. So the irony of them coming after this very tangential indirect claim is just ludicrous. By this theory, everybody in D.C. belongs in prison. Well, so it, it's not just that, Robert. Like the, uh, Since that indictment comes down, I got jackasses on the Internet saying, Viva, you're from Canada. You have no business commentating on, Amer on American politics. It's like, first of all, you morons, I pay taxes out here, so I think I have the right to speak to some extent. But this is how it's like moving the Overton window to now everybody thinking a foreigner Talking about American politics, even in America, is somehow election interference or FARA violations. It's wild, and I don't know how you push back at that Overton window. It, it's FARA should be eviscerated. FARA is a for, walking, talking First Amendment violation, and an honest, honorable Congress would uh, uh, take it off the books altogether. Just take it off the books. You can require people to register who are actually lobbying by referring to lobbying in the narrow terms it has typically been defined, and that's it. Don't have any criminal sanctions.
the criminal they will be abused they've always been abused it, it's because federal government has way too much criminal power as, as uh, already so that that's deeply that's the third part of this that's perilous the the effort to criminalize dissident speech by connecting it to foreign money aside from the glaring hypocrisy of this Rupert Murdoch foreigner he's a US citizen now but he wasn't always Carlos Slim Carlos Slim Mexican billionaire owns the New York Times by this definition has every reporter at the New York Times registered as a foreign agent have any of them I mean you know I mean it's one after the other these but people are all getting all excited Megan Kelly Megan you could be prosecuted under this interpretation so, of FARA. So let, let's, why don't we find a, a red state attorney general or district attorney and bring charges? I mean, well, why? it's subject to the Justice Department only. This is a federal crime. I'm so an idiot. Okay, well, that, that answers that question. <laughs> it, it's just a dangerous, perilous path to go down, and it should be scrapped and scraped, scratched and scraped altogether. But the, uh, so that's their other goal, and people should have been terrified and horrified of it. Now, let's get to, Given the objectives of, of this operation, the and many of which they achieved, you should ask yourself immediately, what's the evidence that any of this has anything to do with any Russians? Did Russiagate 1.0 actually turn out to have Russian involvement? Not really. P people seem to have forgotten, like I sort of tried to do the detailed breakdown in my car today. The Steele dossier was funded, that's, that, that out of which that was born, was paid for by the DNC from a, uh, I don't know if he was, he wasn't Russian, he was British. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he had an MI5 operative who working for MI5 and CIA, CIA, MI6 and CIA, and working with the five eyes to spy on Trump. He was the principal source. His first financier was a Ukrainian oligarch, anti-Russian. His second financier was the British government and British government officials. And his third financier was the Democratic National Committee. So the it turned out to have nothing to do with Russians, right? You know the so uh, the this culminated also into Russia Gate 2.0. Russia Gate 2.0, for those that don't remember, was Mueller was brought in to cover up the first version of Spygate. So the first version of Spygate was the pretext was Russia Gate 1.0. He needed to create Russia Gate 2.0 to cover up for Spygate 1.0. That was under fake pretext Russia Gate 1.0. And so what does he do? He culminates his case with an indictment against the Internet Research Agency in New York. Big, big hoopla in the media. Oh, yeah. So Bo Mueller's nailed him. Mueller's got him. He showed how they really influenced the election. Now, if you dug in, you found the same factual weaknesses that you find in this case. You're like, OK, so how exactly did they influence the election? Forty thousand dollars worth of ads on Facebook. Mostly bad trolling activity that politically conflicted with each other. It's like this isn't interference in an election. That's a joke. So the but the bigger issue, as soon as I saw it, I said uh, dollars to donuts. The Russians aren't behind this. This is a bogus indictment meant to create a fake cover story for Spygate 1.0 and RussiaGate 1.0. Now you brought up a point that I would have never thought of in a million years because I lacked the knowledge of how things went sideways with RussiaGate 1.0. The two there are no American-based defendants. Uh, named in this indictment and your amazing insight is that well this will preclude a certain amount of discovery because nobody's going to appear you, you won't have any american-based entity that's going to say we want to fight this and we want discovery uh, but flesh that out because i think i missed that the first time around with russiagate 1.0 yeah so uh, yeah, russiagate 1.0 steel dossier russiagate 2.0 the internet research agency so Mueller just makes one mistake he indicts a bunch of russians says it's all, this is a big spook operation. You read through it and you're like, if you know anything about Russian intelligence operations, you know this is a joke, right? I mean, at every minute, they're either portraying them as super sophisticated people who can get anybody killed anywhere with any kind of secret poison to being so incompetent and capable, they can't even operate like a half-assed troll farm, right? Somebody telling you that narrative is telling you one of those two is a lie, maybe both. So the mistake he makes though, is he indicts a company. So you indict an individual, they're subject to you know not having bail, going to prison for life, et cetera. They knew, uh, Mueller's team knew by indicting those Russians, they're never going to appear in U.S. court. They're not going to care. So they're, they're not going to risk their freedom and liberty on the, on the credibility and integrity of the U.S. judicial system. They're not that naive. Um, and, but he's, he gets a little greedy. He indicts one of the companies. Now, a company can appear. 
all they're subject to is fines and whatever assets are subject to your jurisdiction, which in this case were very limited. So they showed up to the shock of the Mueller team. And they come in and they say, we want to see what your evidence is in this case. Why don't you produce discovery to see if you're not just telling one big fat lie, one complete fabrication? No company would appear that was guilty because it would be subject to its own discovery and other issues. The only kind of company that appears in that context is one that knows it's innocent and knows that its downside risk is low for proving its innocence. So what does the Mueller team do? They start panicking. I remember predicting this at the time. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. It's like, watch. They won't produce a single thing, and they'll dismiss the whole case rather than produce discovery. And that's exactly what they did. They couldn't produce a single piece of evidence to document their case. They knew if they produced that evidence, that evidence would indict their case. That Russiagate 2.0 was as big a fat a fraud as Russiagate 1.0. All to cover up Spygate 1.0. And... That's exactly what happens. They go into the judge and they say, Judge, please dismiss. They claim national security. National security? Where was the national security when you put all those facts in the indictment? Why can't you prove those facts in the indictment? What's your evidence? Wouldn't you be eager to? You got a Russian intelligence operation trying to shape American presidential elections? Wouldn't you want the world to see that in a live trial? Yet Mueller's team was oddly uninterested in that ever happening. So much so that rather than go forward with any degree of discovery, any degree of trial, they dismiss the case against the Internet Research Agency entirely. Of course, the media forgets to cover those facts outside of some brief little, you know, you know, page A12 at the bottom right-hand corner section. Mm-hmm. So as soon as this indictment came down, I was like, all right, I bet it's a cover for another Spygate operation. Proof of that is right in the indictment. Second, I, uh, my guess is intended to be an October surprise. The timing of it tells you everything you need to know there and the media interpretation of it. And last but not least, that it's intended to, to intimidate dissident speakers. Hey, if you're out there and you want to be independent, you better make sure your money comes from the right place or we can put you in jail at any given moment because we're going to call you an unregistered foreign lobbyist. You know, the, that, uh, that routine. Mm-hmm. So the... Uh, somebody they don't have the date on the bottom of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. I'm uh, sorry. Hold on. Is there a? There ah, is well, no... well, by the way, that's another giveaway. The fa- yeah, usually you see it's right there. Usually, yeah. Well, you, usually it's stamped at the top. Also, oh, yeah. hold on. What am I doing here? It says, "Uh, oh, cripe." Come on, I, I can't get my fat fingers off my cursor. Hold on, <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah, I'll have to go up here. Here, okay. Let me get the. the... I can't get my, there we go. I got it. I got it. Like, usually you got a stamp at the, at the front here. It says uh, whatever date it was filed. So no date on this flipping thing anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting too. The, uh, uh, that it was sealed and that they released it, the timing of the release. To, the, to the, the day after. Are. Well, the, the day after, let me, let me put the grounds to seal it. What do they need to seal it for? And not just that they sealed it. I mean, I guess they want to identify the people. And then in that indictment, it's so thinly disguising who the people are that everybody knew within five minutes. But it was the day or two after um, how nobody's talking about the actual Chinese right. spies. They may, have excelled, they may have planned on this being a couple of weeks later, but they keep getting caught with Chinese spies working for Democrats. So they, they, <laughs> they had to put that out there again. No, no, it's the Ruskies. Everybody, I mean, it's, it's also meant to boost Russia, par- anti-Russia paranoia oh, yeah. and all of that. Has that added little bonus to it for the deep state t- crowd? The but the giveaway, aside from it, to so the Southern District of New York and askers, I've said the Southern District of New York, along with the D- District of Corruption, are the two most corrupt federal districts in all of America from a prosecutorial perspective. And and well, what's the connection to SDNY? Nobody in tenant media is, is is in the SDNY. Nobody. Not Lauren Chen. Not Lauren Southern. Not tenant media. The corporation. Not Tim Pool. Not Penny Johnson. Not Dave Rubin. There's no connections to New York. So why is it in New York? Because that this is another thing, forensic fingerprints. This is a fraudulent indictment. It's a bogus indictment. It's a fake indictment that has fake charges brought by a bunch of frauds and phonies and fakes at the Justice Department and in the deep state. And anybody regurgitating this garbage to attack Lauren Chen or anybody else should be embarrassed. They should be ashamed. They should go find a mirror, look at themselves, and then smack themselves in the face because that's how stupid they are, just to wake themselves up, to buy this for a third time, for crying out loud. But a giveaway, no company is indicted. No American is indicted. The only people they indict are two Russians they know will never appear in the United States to defend themselves because they don't care about it. 
Now, by the way, I know some of the people that were connected to RT when they got the sanctions by the Biden administration. They wanted nothing to do with the U.S. They wanted the heck out of the U.S. The idea that they would run this operation is ridiculous. The idea that they, it, it doesn't fit their, mo, uh, their modus operandi. It doesn't fit what their mindset was when they were trying to get the heck out of the country. It doesn't fit any. It doesn't fit their pattern of behavior in other instances. If they were going to pick people, they wouldn't have picked these people. These people are not even... Tim Poole is mostly anti-Russian. Dave Rubin is mostly anti-Russian. Benny Johnson is mostly anti-Russian. Robert, Robert, Robert the, the, the indictment says, well, there was no uniform messaging, but it was too... Well, you're so talk, they talked about inflation. Everybody knows that's Russian disinformation. The, you, they talked about Biden being bad. Everybody knows that must be Russian disinformation. They talked about immigration. That must be Russian dis. How dumb do you have to be to believe so? You have to be Ben Shapiro level stupid to believe this kind of thing. So the uh, uh, this is just a f complete fraudulent indictment. Everything about it is fake. Everything about it is phony. It's a, based on a dangerous and wrong legal theory. But I guarantee you, if you dug in, if they really believed there was a Russian intel operation, they would have let it run. They would have gone to the Dave Rubens and the Tim Pools, and they would have been trapped the Russians even further. They would have developed more evidence, more information, uh, and, and tied in more people. They would have been eager to do it. They would have indicted everybody, including all the companies, to have a big full, uh, big, full show trial on it. Well, th that's, that's, that's what I don't understand. If they're alleging, as they did in one paragraph, that they think Lauren Chen knew and surreptitiously did not disclose this to the Ruben, Tim Pool, uh, Johnson gang, and play that, because they're playing that to Ruben and, and Tim Pool. They're saying, you guys are the victim of a crime because Lauren knowingly did not disclose this to you, so you guys are the victim. If they knew that, and if that Which were in still fact true. what the crime is. So what if the money's from Russia? So what? Let so me ask you this. From China. So what's from anywhere else? Well, what, I what mean, is, most of American media has foreign investors. No one has ever, until now, suggested that's a crime. It, it's a ludicrous suggestion. And all these people just took it at face value. Oh, I guess, of course, of course, that's a crime. I mean, I mean, unbelievable. Aside from the fact you dig in, I guarantee you, this money didn't come from Moscow. It came from Langley. That's where this money is. They used two XRT people as their cutouts. Those Russians have nothing to do with it. My guess is they knew nothing about it, had no idea about it. Could the, and they just, because, but they knew they were never coming to the U.S., would never step into the U.S., would never defend themselves in the U.S., so they could be easy cutouts. They are just cutouts. There, there is no Russians behind this. There's no Russian money behind this. I guarantee you, you dig into the money. Notably, they track no money back to Russia. Money's like Turkey and Dubai. See, and it's like, eh, there's other accounts Russians would have used. The uh, on the other hand, if you're CIA, yeah, that sounds like a convenient place for where you like to launder your money. Let me bring this up. I do not under it's not for lack of trying to understand. This is count two conspiracy to commit money laundering. The allegations can so they repeat the whole indictment from at least the dates, yada yada. The the two defendants and others, known and unknown, willfully and knowingly combined, conspired, confederated, agreed together with each other to commit money laundering. It was part of the object of the conspiracy. And, that the defenders they, they would transport, but they don't. And, I, what's the money laundering? This is money laundering, unless you have an underlying FARA violation, which is a complete extension of FARA law. But what they're telling you is what they're doing: just remove the Russians, put Langley, and you get a confession of what took place. They're the ones laundering money. They're the ones up to fraudulent activities. They're the ones trying to entrap people. They're the ones doing all of it, uh, and they're going to keep running it over and over again until we get rid of FISA. They're going to keep coming up with bogus excuses to use FISA to spy on Americans. Now, I was so I, I put out a video. I, I, I'm reluctant to. I was reluctant to put it out because I don't want anyone thinking like I'm. I'm needling Ruben, Benny, or Tim. I, I like them and I think they're good people. And I don't think I think Lauren's a good person also, and I don't believe anybody's done anything remotely wrong here. And I was going to DM them the video that I put out or my thoughts, knowing they're going to. If anybody's in there, they're going to see my DMs anyhow. So I may as well make a video about it. You know, Ruben, uh, Benny, and Tim come out and they say, you know, we think the FBI tells us we're potentially the victim of a crime and so on and so forth. Tim says he's going to or, or at least meet with them. I don't know if he's serious or not. I, my thought is just by virtue of the fact that they say that we're the victim of a crime, I know that they're in a tough spot right now in that they need to distance themselves from even the accusations to begin with. Yeah. Lauren has had and a YouTube channel. That's taking the bait. I would not what? do that. 
Well, well to me, I'd be like, you guys are a bunch of frauds. You illicitly spied on me. I'm suing you tomorrow for illicitly spying on me. Let's find out what the truth is. You got to be counter-aggressive with scuzzbags like these. You cannot roll over because any sign of weakness or any sign of politeness will be seen as a sign of weakness. Any sign of respectfulness or deference will be seen as a sign of weakness. And by golly, don't be dumb enough, Tim Poole or Matt Christensen, to sit down and talk with the feds. Come on. I mean, they're like, oh, we're volunteer. We want to prove how eager we are. This is like being accused of being a commie when you're not in the 50s and being like, I'm going to run to prove what I'm, how I'm, I'm not a commie. That never worked out well, folks. So you, the, you, you can't take the bait on any of this. You got to call it out for the fraud that it is. This is a deep state indictment meant to cover up deep state crimes against Americans that ain't got nothing to do with Russians. I like that response that should have been, and I can't blame them for what they did because I can understand also it's like... Yeah, it's, but it's a... Well, you're, you're, come on, Tim. I mean, how do you cover the General Flynn case and then make the mistake General Flynn made? That's what I, I mean. mean I, come on. I, I, I appear... I, my reaction would have been, I don't even see a crime here. What's your evidence? The other thing is Tim... Yeah, Poole, I, my first letter would be, I know you spied on me. Turn over the evidence now or when do I sue? So I, I, I'd have woke those... People well, <laughs> now that was another question I had is, can anybody and everybody involved request the file that they built up on them? Well, they've designed to uh, hide that under FOIA because there's a law enforcement exception. Only way you're going to get that is to sue. Say this was an illicit spying operation from day one. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but, you know, that's why they made it so difficult for Carter Page to get legal relief and remedy because it was illegal spying for him. And they found every excuse in the book uh, to try to deny it to him. But the only way you're ever going to try to get remedy is to uh, seek it. Uh, you know, it may be uphill in certain places, but don't go and talk to them. These are bad faith actors. All they're there to do is try to entrap you into a mistake. That's it. And expect that they know every single communication you've ever had because they've been using FISA to spy on you for two years. Well, that's what my, you know, what, that's what would be my advice to Tim is what information do you think they're going to, you're going to give them like your communications with Lauren as to negotiations showing that you didn't know, like they already have that. They have everything. So like, what would you be able to give them other than stuff that they might not already have so they can go after you for a ledger entry in your corporate books to charge well, you with 34 counts? Of the, the easiest thing to get somebody for is a false statement to an FBI officer. It's always the easiest. So that their the goal is always to entrap you into saying something they can later say is false. That's why it never makes sense to sit down and talk with the feds. Just never does. They, they've proven themselves dishonest, dishonorable. And that's why, by the way, they invited them to a voluntary appearance. By inviting them to a voluntary appearance, they can say this was there was nothing about this that was in any way custodial. And so that they don't have to give them warnings and they can entrap them all they want. So that that's what that is. That, that's just a trap. Don't take the bait. I like that. Well, Russiagate is fake. I mean, imagine the same people who bought the idea that Hunter Biden's laptop was a Russiagate operation. Could it? I mean, they've, they've done this now four or five times in the last five years. How, how many? And I saw so many straightforward conservatives just accept it. Oh, okay. That's the what government drew... says Russia was, must, must be true. No, but and they, and they, they vitriolically go after Lauren as if they didn't just live through the, the Mar a Lago raid, which we know they falsified the evidence that they leaked to the media right. afterwards. When it happens to Trump, clearly it's bad, but now hey, it, it made for good. I, I think a lot of it is about uh, rage baiting or rage clicking, whatever the hell it is. Uh, I think there's a lot of people who the, the internet drama is just too much to avoid. But um, I, look, it's going to take. I, 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 it's not that I'm cynical. I believe that this Merrick Garland DOJ is corrupt to the core, so I don't believe a damn word they have to say. I know Lauren Chen. She's a good person. I met Liam. They're good people. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, if they're, even if they're guilty of having taken European money to so finance what? their operations, so effing what? Right. And if you talk about foreign influence, the, the, the top of that list, Britain would be a high up there. Canada would be high up there. Europe would be high up there. Uh, the the entire Middle East, both sides, would be way up there. Like people like to highlight Israel or the not or anti-Israeli sources. Both of them are high up. Now I can tell you the anti-Israeli sources a lot more money. They got a lot more oil. So that, that, that that's where the big money is, folks. Well, but, it, like I I cannot downplay or ignore the APAC. So what would be the Qatar? I mean, APAC would be well. Dude, nothing, nothing compares to, like Qatar. No, well, how, the how do they do their how do they do their lobbying and do they have a I mean, they directly buy it in many cases i mean the, there's jokes about i mean and not, not to me and then the, of course you have china uh the 
which has influenced a hundred different directions. So the, uh, I mean, the China are the, are the most, uh, use the most subterfuge to influence. Uh, but the, the Arab world is huge. It's like, you just look into, I mean, uh, look into the various royal funds and you'll find they're the source of all kinds of think tanks and universities and media operations across the United States. I mean, Al Jazeera operates in the United States. They're entirely foreign government fund. I mean, so the, uh, uh, the idea that, and not only that, the, the, the ultimate capper of all this, the number one country in the world that f- directly funds uh, through all kinds of cutouts, media influence campaigns globally to interfere in governments is the United States of America. Nobody does it as big as we do. Nobody does it as much as we do. Nobody does it as often as we do. And now we're going to pretend it's a global crime against justice for for some, supposedly somebody to do it in the United States? Come on. Uh, do I have to be nervous that I routinely give interviews on RT for zero dollars and zero cents? Well, that's their goal. Their goal is to intimidate. Be be careful what you say. Be careful who you say it with. Be careful what network. That's all. It's an intimidation campaign. And by giving it credence, that's what Dave Rubin, Tim Pool, or any of these other people that concede to it at any level by giving are get the that they are in fact deferring to that intimidation. You should never defer to intimidation. I I like Tim Pool's troll approach much better when he added the Israeli and Ukrainian flag to his Twitter <laughs> statement. It's like, yep. there you go. Well, that's, the, uh, that's... that's a more sensible approach. Don't go sitting down and talking to them because they want a little chat. There's no such thing as a friendly chat. That's like having the mob come down and say they want a little chat with your business security needs. That's never going to go well. Uh, that, and that's, the but... same is true here. That's I, that's why I'm not sure if Tim is not trolling in a very dry. I troll. hope he is, but I mean, yeah, I think we, Matt Christensen was. All of them get intimidated by the. They're all naive. It's also a sign, by the way, of who they approached. Right? They didn't approach you. They didn't approach me. They didn't approach Alex Jones like they had tried in the past. The, the the that was a sign. This was a government operation. Right? If it was an actual foreign government operation, they would actually go to the more effective voices. To be honest about it. Uh, that, that actually have more sympathy to their position on some key issues uh, in ways these these people mostly did not. Uh, most of these are Blaze people. Uh, you know, same with Lauren Chan. I mean, the, so uh, same with Lauren Southern. So the uh, that was also a giveaway in its, own, in its own right. But the reason why they don't is they knew people like us would sniff it out 10 miles away. You know, it'd be like, oh, okay, hold on a second. Who's doing what? You know. All right, you, you you're already spying on my accounts. You, you don't need another excuse to do it. Come on, well, let's, it's, it's let's like, try again, pal. I've I've never taken a dollar for an interview because, like, on the one hand, it, things get a little weird and ugly when you ask for money. And it, if you, I mean, maybe I'm leaving money on the table, but I also like you know we maintain a small. We're all getting overpaid, though. I will say that for the record. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tenet it, Media was a very mediocre operation. God bless Lauren Chen. She doesn't know how to run a media platform. Uh, I, I remember when it launched, and I was like, this is just stunningly mediocre. Uh, the uh, in terms of its presentation and the yeah. and I mean, God bless Tim Pool and everybody, but did, did they deserve those kind of checks? No, of course not. I don't, they got big names and you want to build it up, you got to yeah, burn money they, at the beginning. They, they're not worth that much cash, but uh, uh, if I'm writing the checks, no way I'm writing that, that big a check to any of them. Just well, like, that's maybe they just thought they got a, a, a filthy rich philanthropist who has so much money he doesn't mind if he burns it. Lauren Chen got terminated by the Blaze, so I mean, and she got her canceled, uh, her channel canceled. That was a wuss move by Glenn Beck. So, is there? A, first of all, first things first. And YouTube canceled everybody's accounts. Just started canceling accounts. Now they weren't, uh, they, they weren't going to cancel the money makers like uh, Dave Rubin and Tim Pool. Notice that they just canceled Lauren Chen. Well, no, o- only people direct. Henson, that they weren't going to go uh, much further without risking uh, loss of real revenue. Uh, but it's why you know, I mean, Pool goes back and forth on how much he's on Rumble. I mean, this should be a sign, you know, that that YouTube used this as a pretext to completely eliminate Lauren Chen from existence, uh, and 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 sort of public existence. Mm-hmm. And so the uh, I think it you know shows you where I mean the people that are skeptical of Israel this will not help. But you know Dave Rubin's very pro Israel, uh, so Benny Johnson leans pro Israel. Uh, so even though Lord, that's why like there was no unity here. Lord Chen was skeptical of Israel. Ah, but Robert, don't you see the disunity is the sign of the disinformation? Yeah, I know. That was the other thing. That was, that was the <laughs> funniest part ever. I mean, I mean, everything. I mean, they had to convert this and contort this and distort this in such preposterous direction. I guarantee you there's another half dozen of these floating around. Um, so, so, someone someone jokingly said, I made the list. I can I can guarantee you I'm not on that list because I, I, you know, I know where my sources of revenue come from. I, I might just be on a watch list, but... 
why is nobody suing YouTube? Like, I've got a theory. Deceitful business practices. It, 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 as, as, a, as a merchant, they, they take you on and they screw you through deceitful business practices. Why has nobody sued them for this? I mean, because so far the courts have thrown it out on Section 230 grounds or First Amendment grounds. Mm -hmm. that, that's been the hurdle so far. But I agree, at least in theory, they should be subject to the same contractual rules as everyone else. Uh, in the same tort rules as everyone else. I I, I, we, I made the argument years ago that, uh, oh, geez, unjust enrichment would be one. They they, they bring them on, they make their money, and then willy-nilly they cancel them. Uh, reasonable business expectations. Like, I, 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 there's no fear hiding a wish here. I don't want trouble. But I would I would take the suit. And I mean, I would take it in a state no. maybe that has like an Ashley Moody as, as um, oh, geez, is she attorney general or is she? Yeah, she's the attorney general. What's her position? Ashley Moody in Florida. Yeah, the uh, uh, Attorney General of Florida. Yeah. I, I, I was at an event yesterday with Lectern Guy and Ashley Moody gave a speech. I'm going to DM her and see if she remembers who I am. But I, I, I would sue them. I would sue them for deceitful business practices, unjust enrichment, and, and some form of fraud because it's fraudulent inducements. And then they just willy-nilly. Well, she wasn't even charged. She was know, named. Yeah, completely. Oh, yeah, completely. It, it, was, it was nonsense at every single level. The uh, It was uh, – they approached sort of mid-level mid -level influencers. Uh, who are sub below politically sophisticated. I, I know some of them would not like me to hear me say that, but they just are. I mean, just to be honest. I mean, I mean, I mean, Tim Pool was a skate, you know, skateboarding guy, you know, 10 years ago, right? He, he's kind of new to all this. Um, none of these people are super sophisticated in the in the media business world, right? In the sense of knowing how that in the geopolitical space, uh, say, for example, uh, they haven't been around that block very often. And that's who they targeted, which was, by the way, a giveaway that this was not a Russian operation. Uh, that this was an, it's amazing that they they brushed off like old scripts from the fifties, uh, and they just keep re re. You know, it's like it's like bad Disney. They keep reissuing <laughs> it's, these. It's the reboot, different characters. Yeah, it's the reboot.